you have any response? So, <laughs> we're just giving you our comment. Sure. Um, so, hi, my name is Rashawn Bliss, um, and I'm here to uh, bring to the attention of the board and ask for um, some action uh, about a specific case involving a woman named Karen Sidaro. Um, Karen has been an active participant in the Occupy Denver movement, uh, and she has been essentially targeted by the Denver Police Department. Um, she has been arrested seven times in the last three months um, on a number of different charges, many of which she has uh, beaten and um, many of which are, are uh, allegedly fabricated uh, according to people who were present at her arrest, um, her arrests, plural. Uh, but I want to call attention to a specific event that involves Karen. Uh, she was arrested on February 29th um, for stepping into the streets uh, during a protest that Occupy Denver was, uh, under was undertaking. Um, she was the only person arrested uh, for that specific charge, or for that specific offense, and she uh, was singled out by the, the riot police that were there. But the issue that I want to make sure that the Citizens Oversight Board is aware of and takes active steps to uh, engage with is that while Karen was in jail, she, well, first when she was arrested, her zip ties were placed uh, entirely too tight, and I think that that uh, policy and the practice of zip tying um, citizens who are being arrested needs to be investigated and, had, and changed. Um, but her zip ties were placed so tight that she, that she lost uh, feeling in her hands, and while she was zip tied, she was placed in a holding cell for up to four hours. And the zip ties were never removed in this holding cell, despite the fact that she can't harm anyone in a, set, in a room by herself. Uh, so she was left in entirely too tight of zip ties, and she has since suffered nerve damage in her hands. Uh, but not only that, Ms. Sadaro was psychologically and emotionally abused while she was in custody of uh, the Denver Police Department. Uh, she, has, she has alleged that while she was in the cell, uh, with with the zip ties on, with no recourse uh, or no legal support, she was called a, and excuse my language, but this is the language of uh, Denver law enforcement, she was called a cunt, a fat whore, a bitch. She was told to go kill herself. And this happened with the, the police force's knowledge that Karen has a, has a history of mental instability and has attempted suicide before. <coughs> She told me, personally, that one of them said, I wish you would have succeeded. <clears throat> this to a woman who has been arrested seven times by the same police force and singled out for abuse in separate, like, in, in that's, that's one issue. There were other issues uh, along the lines of um, Occupy Denver arrestees being bailed out, uh, and there had been some, some strange complications uh, with the bailing process that we would ask that uh, the Citizens Oversight Board look into because for many of the people who are arrested, their bail has sometimes taken up to six hours to process after the money is received. Um, and a specific incident, again, and involved Ms. Sidaro, uh, where she and other people uh, being present to support uh, the arrestees and get them out of jail were asked to leave the um, these, uh, the jail, the, the front lobby, because uh, for, and they weren't given uh, any reasons um, that really made it, made it necessary for them to be removed, but after they were removed, Ms. Sadaro uh, and some other people from Occupy Denver were confronted with a line of police who were trying to uh, make sure that they didn't re-enter the building, and during that exchange, they were again called names by the police department. Uh, and Did she file a complaint? She is in custody right now. I, I would really appreciate your help with that. Um, but what I really, uh, so I had a couple questions, um, and my questions are, what does the Citizens Oversight Board plan to do about Ms. Sidaro's case? We don't have information to be able to respond to that, except if she files a complaint, then our staff will follow up. <laughs> so she has to file a complaint for you to look into this kind of allegation? Please, please. I want to be really clear. We don't have any way to deal with anything unless a complaint has been filed. I see. Okay. So I need the piece of paper. It doesn't have to be a 12-page 
discuss them. I need a piece of paper about the basis of what happened filed on a form, and then we can start to make sure that Greg and our staff and people are looking at it, making sure we're trying to get the bottom of it. But whether you have a separate lawyer for other things or not, Michelle's holding up a blue, blue pamphlet back there to start with that. We have to start with the complaint. It's just your entree into the system, and we can't do anything without it. So, Great. please, that. complain. I just have one more. Um, the, as a number of people who have spoken already today have, uh, have noted, there is a pretty systematic problem uh, with Denver police officers uh, refusing to identify themselves, give their badge numbers, and give their, uh, their business cards when asked and lawfully requested uh, by their citizens who they are sworn to protect. Um, this is a policy that has just horrendously failed uh, to be enforced, and I want to formally request that the Citizens Oversight Board look into how uh, that policy and that practice can be uh, improved. Thank you. I'm the chief community organizer of the Denver 420 rally who addresses uh, in community affairs at large and with a marijuana platform, which as we know leads to a lot of racial profiling. During our meetings recently with the mayor's uh, yak and greet at Washington Park, uh, you know, I wanted to understand what is, I mean, the Citizen Oversight Board oversees the mayor's office and policing issues, so this is a policing issue at large because I want to know what was the priority of going to that city or to that part of town where there are no priority issues being uh, dealt with there as far as police brutality and other than maybe the voters there that the mayor is trying to see. When asked by Lisa Calderon uh, during the last other meeting we had in another far off neighborhood in District 3 with the chief of police, what is the priority going on with these neighborhoods? Only except for when these go on in District where they're supposed to be going on. But when it comes to town hall meetings, it's not even going into the communities that are affecting us. So, you know, I want to appoint, address the issue that she had brought up that are you guys going to, and I want to, this has to be put on a public platform. Are you going to welcome the police officers that for fire if they get their jobs back from doing what they did to Michael D. Herrera, Alexander Lando, and obviously I've placed complaints here many of times with many of you people, and you've seen the video, and you've absolutely done nothing. You personally have come up with the excuse that there should be a signature spot, but guess what? There is no signature spot on this oversight board complaint form. And you said, oh, it's nice for you to keep trying to put your issues up on TV because I'm trying to be popular. Does it look like I'm trying to be popular? I'm not happy about this whole situation here. Second of all, I want to talk about community policing. You guys want us to ride along with you, but why don't you ride along with me and see what it's like when we're being dealt with the issues, when we're doing our civic responsibility that you guys are supposed to be doing in the first place. About security that faces the issues that we faced during the 420 rally. And you said you would not provide us security. Well, it is our filed First Amendment constitutional right to assemble and practice civil disobedience peacefully. And if someone comes up and messes with my sound equipment or something, are you gonna do anything about it? No, you're not gonna protect my constitutional amendment rights just like you said you weren't going to. And that's my right. And as far as the other issues, City Attorney Freed Nash called me today about the, us using an altered version of the logo. You know, uh, because the City Attorney sent us a cease and desist. Well, you know what? This mayor is using this campaign that we are all Denver. We are all Denver too, and we have a large voice here. It has continued to be ignored and very disrespectfully disengaged by a lot of people in this, this city. Service, and it's been going on since the landing of the first pilgrim of this country. Woo! Yeah. Woo! Yeah. I want to know people that may be seeing the fences around the park, but the 420 rally is still a go with or without that permit. We are assembling. Yeah. Yeah. With these other issues that people have testified here with Ty also and Robert Lopez, who is, will be addressing his issues and a few other people. Luke, Lieutenant Pazin has addressed these issues not to seek out suspects, but to seek out justice. 
into keeping our communities really secure. And not by this phony Governor Hickenlooper that he's left this culture behind with, with Whitman in District 6. So this is not really a disrespectful thing that to Antonio Lopez, but to the culture that was created by, Whit by the marriage of Whitman and Hickenlooper and his broken windows policing department. Way, and for you painting a rosy picture for mediation, when I talked with Neil Baker and my mediation experience him for being an openly gay Chicano and him calling me a faggot, mediation sucks. It doesn't work because all he did was come in and throw papers in and say, this is what we do is talk about how cops are bad to children. Mediation sucks. I have the officers of every name in District 6, whether it be cash, and the last complaint that I made, Officer Sparks, Nixon, Tinney, Moore. I can go on. Spielman. So if you guys want to know some more information, just like Lisa Calderon said, and you guys are having discussions about us, why don't you invite us to the table, be inclusive, have engagement to get some respect, and offer some equality in the end. Thank you. Robert Lopez, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Speak up. Sorry. Um, so, my, I heard earlier you say uh, we, we, file, we, we have filed complaints in order for you guys to respond, but um, I have filed uh, several complaints, and all I just get is a, a complaint explained away. And so that brings me here today. I've been stopped um, many times within the past six months. Um, I was just recently stopped again, um, and I was visiting with a friend uh, outside of her apartment complex. Um, there was just an empty field to our right and apartments to our left. Uh, we were just sitting there. Um, uh, one of the officers, uh, an officer just comes up and pulls us over for no reason, has no reason at all. I have it all on video, but I'm sure that should hopefully mean something. Um, uh, and second of all, um, you know, and it, it's like uh, every time a Latino or African American is in, uh, the, in, uh, in our, our own neighborhood, we get harassed, we get messed with. Um, and, if it, if it was a white person in a white neighborhood, they wouldn't even get harassed. Um, and I mean, that there's definitely a, uh, something is not right here, people. Please listen, please uh, thank you for listening to me. Um, and uh, my, my family and I, on, on that note, my family and I have, uh, been residents of uh, District 1, and uh, we've, we have experienced um, uh, good things uh, uh, from good officers uh, like Lieutenant Pazin. Uh, he seeks, we believe he does seek truth and justice, and uh, we, we, agree, we have agreed that uh, he should be nominated to District 6. Thank you. Ninth of last year, I was beaten unconscious, my arm dislocated. I was waking to my arm being dislocated while I was in a wrist lock. My crime, disobeying a lawful order, <coughs> not believe to be an illegal order. Uh, for sitting in front of a, a table, was not struck in the sidewalk um, at Occupied Denver, of course. Uh, Denver police beats everybody. They beat whites, they beat whether it's equal or not. That's not the point. The point of this is you beat anybody. Mm -hmm. I've done research about what this department has cost the city since 2007, and it comes out to $4,465,450 in settlements. <clears throat> 4465450 says 405 
in-state students to college for one year, 102 in-state students to college for four years at CU. For Metro State, it says 739 kids to school, 185 for four years. Get them a degree. You could put 150 people back to work, pay for around 22 foreclosed homes, feed the 11,000 homeless who currently live in Denver for about three months. We we'll feed about 33 families for one year. Feed 300 students for, for a school year at 93 schools. You get the point? This is not money well spent. This is the money we hear about. Imagine what happens behind closed doors as people in Denver and Colorado will no longer tolerate this. <coughs> Denver ranks 16th in the nation for safest cities. There is no excuse for the brutality and lack of respect and morals that the police show to the citizens here and abroad. This is unacceptable, and we're here. We're not going anywhere. 